Hello and welcome. These are horse racing selections for Thursday the 30th of November. I am Flat Cap Callum and I'm hoping you are all very, very well. All right, it's still quiet. It's still quiet out there. Uh, as far as Thursday goes, I've picked out three horses um, that I think are, are worth a little interest. Um, the caution is there is inspections on all three UK meetings. Uh, there isn't currently an inspection in Ireland. Um, so I've got two horses at Thurless and I've got one at Taunton where there is an inspection. Um, so I, I, I put them together in an each way Trixie and if we lose the, the Taunton one um, and, it, and it goes down to a bigger amount on the doubles and whatnot, then, then so be it. But um, it's, it's not one, I've not done anything complicated where the different parameters will mean it's going to have a much bigger impact and, and, and whatnot. So £5 is the stake. Uh, that is all it is. It's a 25p each way Trixie and 350p each way single. So I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, I'll go through Wednesday's bet. Uh, I've got to mention the golf um, and then tips to league. And I think that's about it. There was a few other topics I'm going to touch on. Not, not They're not like long ones, but just you may pay for the useful things or think, things I either haven't said for a while and maybe even things I haven't even said, possibly. We'll get to that. Okay, so uh, Wednesday, we're all at Dundalk um, and we got a winner and nothing to go with it. So uh, 4.25, um, Angel Above tried my luck with a Luke Coma horse. Um, it wasn't to be... Um, interesting race the way it panned out so the, the the bottom five in the betting were in the bottom five places and that is a rarity at Dundalk you don't see that every day uh, I know most people think sure that makes sense the bottom five the betting the bottom five doesn't doesn't usually work like that so the market predominantly had it right I say predominantly the favourite was a short one but the sorry the, the winner was a short one I think it was fours but the three to one favourite and the five to one third favourite both weren't out were out the placing so I think 12s was the best you could, you could get in that one in a place terms. Five o'clock was the one that, that one, wouldn't be the obvious one, but that was the one we had the winner. Uh, Dream today, 14s. It was back to, I think, 15 to 2. Went down to seven runners, but it didn't matter. Well, it did matter because it actually helped because um, unless you were, I think, 365 or Sky that paid third place, um, everywhere else would have been two places, therefore quarter of the odds. So you got a little bit more back for quarter of the odds and you would have done fifth of the odds if you were 365 or Sky. Um, then the 5.30, that all literally stayed in the stalls and um, and no good. But then uh, we are going to get a Luke Homer horse ridden by uh, Osin McSweeney, who we talked about last week, uh, goes and wins on that one. Uh, so, yeah, on, on the wrong horse on the 5.30. Uh, and then the 6 o'clock pick pool, it was, it was the right one from value from last night in terms of it was fifth. Um, three of the top four were shorter ones. And then the only one that made it into the frame that was a bigger price, uh, was a channel regular Breha, but actually it was that was single figures last night. So in the right ballpark. And then the race I left out was the um, the seven o'clock. Um, and then, yeah, annoying, because the horse that I, w I, w I would have put in was a reserve last night. And then um, it got in through a non-runner. And then it went right up the, this afternoon to 100 to 1 at one point. I did put something in the comment whilst the price was at 80s and 45 each way for 45 to 1 for six places, which I thought was a, a, good, a good bet. The horse did come fourth, Emperor of Silk. But yeah, hopefully some benefited, um, but it wasn't there very long. And it's nothing, you know, the channel didn't benefit from it. But yeah, it SP'd at 22s and you could have got a 100 to 1 at one point this afternoon. Um, but I, I'm not a fan. I do it really occasionally, but I'm not a fan of putting in um, horses that are first, second, third reserves at Dundalk. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, Channel had it as nine on nine seventy five back, so seventy five pence profit. Yesterday was what ten, ten loss I think. Was it ten loss? I think it was ten loss um, off top of my head. So we're about nine pound down I think for the week. Um, so we've had three weeks of profit. We're in we're in deficit, and I've only got five going on a Thursday. So so Friday Saturday is where it's hopefully going to be at. But it, at the moment, because the, the weather's so cold and there's a bit of snow about and stuff, it's one of those ones where there might be a few abandonments and stuff. And they've already announced on Sunday there's an additional meeting at Southwell for Jumpers Bumpers. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar, that is basically uh, National Hunt horses running on the all weather. Um, over in races with no obstacles 
So for tra- it's an opportunity for trainers to basically get the horses out, um, keep them fit, um, but can be an absolute nightmare from a betting point of view to try and read a market when you're looking at jumping horses that are running on flat races and they're running on an, an artificial surface that most of them have never seen before. Very, very hard to call. Um, to be, there are some some instances where that can be useful and, and that's in those sorts of instances when I do go and have a look at breeding of horses and see if there's anything in the breeding line that says all oh, weather's quite a good thing. So that was Wednesday. Uh, the golf day really just got started and we only, I only had three and one of them was only a half interest and one of the main ones has already withdrawn with the South African Open. So the half interest one was Frank Kennedy and Australia and he's not had the greatest of starts. Um, so we're then on to the main hope for the golf uh, in our little interest was Jaco Prinsloo who starts in the morning in South Africa. That is all it got. So uh, with the refund, if, if you've done the golf as advised, it's the equivalent of one pound fifty on the channel stake, so very very small um, for that. Um, so let's do Thursday's bet, and then I'm going to do extra stuff and tips the league. Um, so this is me one bet for Thursday: one fifteen Thurless Glenmanure Lodge fourteens. 12s in places, but it's fourteen. I think about four four of the major bookies that we follow on the channel so um yeah it's 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 just about all right in that one i wouldn't want to go wouldn't go want to go single figures on that it may well go down to single figures um i think from a race by the right time i get to the race i think 14s is good on that 235 taunton um I, because of these meetings have got pending abandonments it means there's a lot less betting activity on them so unless there's a sudden surge for a particular reason on a horse not much is going to change night before, but if that meeting goes ahead, I really would see that price shortening up from on Atlantic Storm from 28th. I think that's very, very generous. Um, and then the last one, we're taking a bit of a flyer on one. Um, it's the big field handicap at Thurles. Um I've gone for the, the rank outside, as you know. Um, and yeah, I think there's enough in there to say, uh, from a price point of view, it's worth worth risking it for a biscuit on that one. Um, Michael Witness is a trainer. He... he He's a savvy enough uh, trainer in terms of his race placement. If you look at the trajectory of that horse, um, it ran okay in its maiden races. And then on handicap debut, it was stepped up in distance, which didn't suit on breeding. Um, and it stepped back down again. So you've, you've heard me talk on it before. You know, once you get wise to these things, people look at handicap debutant horses. Then some people are even wiser. And then they start looking at handicap second time out <laughs> and uh, and this 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 looks like if you read it could be one of those so i think it's worth chancing at the prices in a race where currently they're paying five places um so it doesn't have to be the have a jet pack on it to win this thing we're just looking can it creep into a place um on on second start on a handicap on more preferred distance really um so i think yeah uh, there was nothing else in the race that was pretty strong I'd say there's a lot of other races out there um, scheduled for Thursday that are really low grade quality, and there's definitely some 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 potential springers in there that could pop up at big prices. But um, that was that was arguably the least riskiest. <laughs> but doesn't doesn't mean it's not going to come last or pull up or whatever else it might do. But it's worth chance at forties. I think if you're quick, you might get fifties on three six five. In terms of price movement, I would find that one hard to call. Um, I could see that drifting and I could see that going in. So I'm not, I wouldn't make a call on that one about whether whether it would go in and whether it would go out. Whereas opposed to Atlantic Storm, I'd say we should go in. Um, so it's 25p each way Trixie. So each way doubles and trebles. And it's 350p each way single. So nice and straightforward. Um, you could even write that as a 25p each way patent and then 25p each way singles. I don't know what your preference is. Um, Sky are best only because they are, I think they're four there, I think it is. It's either that one or that one. Uh, everyone else is the same terms, which is three, three and five. Uh, but obviously if that one goes down to 14, 15 runners, you're better off with three, six, five than the rest of them because that's the, the book you most like to pay you out for fifth. So Sky best, then three, six, five, Coral, Paddy or Labrooks. I think pretty much of the book major bookies, Betfair's the only one um, who I think are four on that one. So you probably want to avoid them if you can. Five pound is your bet. That's it. All right, that's those. Um, what was going to say? It was yeah. One 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 little topic before tips thing. Um, and you know, I talk a lot on here about price and understanding price perception and value and and things. 
Um, and it comes from, this is sort of a two-part little anecdote, so two, twofold, really. Um, what is, yeah, so when people start looking at, at getting into betting and stuff, they follow markets and they think that, that the price is an indicator of the chance of the horse, right? So some people will go, well, yeah, I don't, I don't want to go too risky, so I'm going to try and find like an eight to nine one shot or something like that. And they pick horses based on price, right? Never, ever, ever do that. Never, ever pick a horse just because of price. I mean, my dad used to swear blind a horse that is nine to one. Uh, he always used to say that nine to one winners are always going to be winners. Can't be true because there's plenty of nine to one losers. He also used to say if a horse is seventh of 17, he will always back a horse next time out after it was seventh of 17. Uh, he's full of superstitions. Anywho, I wouldn't subscribe to those things, but I have seen examples where horses like that do win. Um, anywho, uh, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about not, not blindly following um, that. But the, the, the extension of that is as well, is is people get bias from, from odds, right? I see odds as opportunities. Most people see odds as an indicative chance of it placing or framing or winning or whatever. I see it as an opportunity. The same thing applies to when I'm reading form and data. So I will go and look when I'm reading form and data. I'll go and have a look and see what it says on the racing post. I'll go and have a look, see what it says on sport in life. The reason I go and do that is not because I want to be influenced. It's because I'm not very influenced by those things. I've done it long enough. Like So way, way back in the past, I might have thought, oh, it says something nice there. That would be, be a, give me a good go there. I use those things to my advantage because if big publications like that, and a lot of people will use racing posts and sporting life, um, you know, on their phones or on their computer to pick their horses the night before, there's, there'll be people out there that, you know, go and do it in a betting shop or they'll get papers that, on, on the day or whatever. But a lot of people these days will use racing posts, sporting life um, to go and have a look at them. Um, and if you're really unsavvy, you'll rely on a, a straightforward bookmaker's description um, of, of what's going on. Um, noting that racing posts and sporting life ultimately somewhere embroiled in a bookmaker anyway but anyway what i'm saying is um i look for th for for things that help me in the market so when you've got descriptions out out there like you know 10 pound out the handicap or something like that so give me an example for uh, bet one example being if you go on racing post glenmore law lodge it basically makes a comment in there around it saying it's much better at Ballin Road. Now, that's really helpful because a lot of people would be like, oh, it's not running at Ballin Road, so it's probably not going to run well here. Therefore, I'll avoid it. That helps people not, helps me to, for not people not putting money on it. I read the form and I look at that and I think, okay, what do I think about that? Do I validate that fact? And I look at it and I go, it has run some really good races at Ballin Road, but it's had nice conditions and the right distances and things like that and the right ground. And actually, if you look elsewhere, it's not done terribly, and when it has done terribly, it might not be the best as favourable conditions. So I don't look at the horse and think it's a Ballon Robe specialist, but the fact that a major publication says that it suggests it is means there is a bunch of people that won't back the horse. And I give you a bit of an insight, so I can extend this further. So if I look, so lots and lots of people now share their tips and selections in the comments on a regular basis. In some regard, I those people who do it enough. I can pretty much tell you what some of their selections are going to be before they write them in the selections. Because some people, I can tell, have a lean to whatever their most favourable publication is. So I can, certain people I can think, I see with what they're picking, they have a bias towards what it says in Racing Post, or they have a bias towards Sporting Life. Some people know, like some people literally do go through everything and anything and pick out things and have their own systems. But I can tell with certain people what they're likely to pick because of the lean of the publication they've got. And the same way that you need to try and learn really hard to filter your mind to think prices are an opportunity, descriptors are not there to be helpful. They're there to find, give you an opportunity. Because if you find that you disagree with the descriptor, it's really helpful. Sometimes they're really obvious descriptor and things like it will say ran badly at Gorham Park and actually it ran at Galway <laughs> like there's there's stuff like that we actually get it wrong like never think that they're they're completely uh they're completely accurate uh, generally they are but um but it's always it's it's ultimately somebody's opinion right it's somebody's opinion who's not a tipster who works for ultimately a company that's linked to a betting site 
So it's just somebody giving you a view and they, they, they have to go through all of these races and they have to give a sentence on everything. So how much detail are they really, really looking in all these things? And I appreciate there's a whole bunch of people, you know, not, you know, there's not one person who does every single, I mean, there might be, but I don't think there is one person who does every single race. But yeah, just try, my, my advice is when you're doing this for yourself is to try and open your mind to what's the data tell me? What do I look at? And look at multiple sources and compare and contrast um, because that really, really helps in terms of um, giving you a more rounded view of things. But check, do you agree with what the statement is? So I've done it long enough. The statement doesn't influence what I do other than to me go, oh, that's really helpful because actually that's suggesting that's not good. And I actually think that thing is good. So as much as I disagree with the market sometimes I disagree with I find opportunities to disagree with the market I find opportunities to disagree with what the literature says um, and I'll find opportunities to disagree with what the trends say now the point is in all of this stuff I get it wrong more than I get it right but I need to get it right enough to make profit and that's what I'm always aiming to do right anyone who tips shorties gets it wrong probably more times than they get it right okay that's true for everybody. But I always say it's a much more fun game <laughs> when your money's riding on a 40 to 1 shot that might get a win than it is a 5 to 4 shot. So, um, yeah, you know, ultimately everybody who's playing is, is is trying to win. Not many people actually do win and there's lots of differing adv advice on strategy. And I'm really aware that what I say and the way that I do things is not mainstream. If it was mainstream, then the markets would look different. Um, and the literature would look a little bit differently. So I'm trying opportunities to find an angle where I disagree with the majority. That's ultimately what I'm doing. Sometimes it's I'm disagreeing with the majority at a certain time of day, and at a different time of day, the majority now agrees with me. I try and find those opportunities as well as find the opportunities where the majority disagree with me all day long, and I still find that I'm right at the end. Hopefully that mild ramble makes some sense to people. But yeah... Bottom line is use multiple sources. Don't be influenced by the sentence you read on Sporting Life or Racing Post or The Sun on a Saturday, whatever it might be. Use more sources than that if you truly want to start looking at it. Because if you're reading that and you're thinking, oh, there's a little bit of something I've seen in there, you're absolutely guaranteed there's hundred other thousand punters who have seen the same little sentence. Ultimately, it's going to drive the price down lower to the where from where the value should be irrespective of the outcome sometimes you win sometimes you lose but the value of the horse will go because more people will be influenced by whatever person in whatever admin office has written that sentence about that horse all right okay hopefully useful um i'm sure someone will give me some feedback it was too much and just get on with it tips the league right i got my notes for tips the league um and Thank you, Stephen. I uh, I'm really I, I haven't I haven't sent it Stephen an email in a couple of weeks. So I'm really sorry, Stephen. So hopefully you're watching. Hopefully you'll see this, and I will absolutely reply to you. Um, so I'm really appreciative of all the stuff you keep sending me because um, managing this is is a tricky tricky old gig on top of everything else. Um, but what have we got? We've got um, winner the top seven from last week because only seven people made profit last week. We've got the top 10 overall as it stands and we've got the top three for November. So we've got a few bits to get through. So last week we had, I think, memory serves, Steve will correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, I'm sure, joint winners for the first time. So last week, super low scoring week. We had a lot of entries, more entries than we've had in the last few weeks by quite a bit, 69 entries. Only seven made a profit. It was really low scoring because there wasn't any big price winners. I think fives was the biggest price and no one was on it. So um, joint winners, both of 27.50 last week. So well done, Ed Trainer and Steve Mitchell. Joint winners were 27.50 for last week. And then uh, third, uh, Kenny. Hope you're doing well, Kenny. Hope you've been on another cycling trip recently. Kenny, uh, £20 uh, was third. Then we had Zach Benstead, fourth. Mick Finn and Robin Wilson, joint fifth. And John P, three, five, that three, three and a half thousand or 3,500 was seventh that was the seven entrants that made a profit last week so overall for um for the overall standings uh the top 10 we've had one new entry ed trainer so ed's joint top from last week is enough to sneak him into 10th in the top 10 
Um, other than that, the top nine are the same and a couple have just moved about a little bit. But Ed's bumped himself into the top ten. The rest of the top nine are the same in a marginally different order. But we've still got Secret Lemonade Drinker at one, Sir Mark Evan at two, Des Gibbons three. As for November overall, well, blow me down with a feather. Secret Lemonade Drinker, not only did he win October, he's also going one November. So two months in a row of the uh, top of the tips the leagues. So top overall, but actually was top independently in October and November. So very well done. Uh, 8120. Drawman, uh, regular in the channel comments, 5840 was uh, second and third in November. So Ed was joint top last week. He's made it in the top 10. He's also third overall for November. So well done to Ed. So well done, Secret Lemonade Drinker, Drawman and Ed. You are the top three in November. You win nothing but pride and ego and whatever else you get for, for doing that. So well done to you. Um, that's the tips and stuff. Um, I need to have a little look and I need to, I need to let Steve know as well because he asked me, it was a good prompter about which what we're doing with tips the league in November. So there's obviously, obviously some Saturdays, but then it gets a bit more uh, interesting as we get to Christmas and stuff. So... I need to have a little look of it and I'll I'll, I'll update. But um, I'm yeah I'm wondering about maybe we'll have a Christmas break on the tips of the league stuff. Just we'll we'll see on that when I come back to you. So that's that. Um, was there something else I was going to say? Darts. I was going to say darts to you. So for those of you who've been on the channel um, a year, you'll know that I do have a little interest in darts. I don't do anything on the channel for darts until we get into PDC World Championship darts. Um, and last year, the, whatever I put out, it was overall it was losing last year, um, but we got close. We got Stephen Bunting. I think he got to the quarterfinals and we had, we had money on him to get to the semis. Um, I think that's my recollection. I think that sounds right. Um, it was a decent price though, like hundreds or something like that. Um, but we, yeah, we missed out. Unfortunately, he lost a bit of a ding dong battle, I think, to Michael Smith. That was my memory. Says. <laughs> I, should, I, should, I need to go and check this stuff. So if I've got that wrong, feel free to correct me. But my memory says he got to the quarters. We had money on him for the semis and he got beaten by Michael Smith, who went on to win the tournament. That's what my memory says. So um, I, I've started to look and I'll be looking this week, uh, well, particularly while the racing's quiet. Um, about darts so for anyone who's got a bit of a who likes a bit of darts or wants a bit of an interest the most likely bet I will put out um, is uh, top top quarters bet so basically the, the player to get to the semi-finals from each of the four quarters and I'll be looking at, at lucky 15 Yankee depending on the bookmaker um, so I've already started to put a bit of work into that so it won't be recorded for channel stats um, and it's you know so it's a helpful thing in terms of it's when when the golf goes quiet it's another little distraction um but it, i won't be advising it as big stake it's a bit a bit of an interest but yeah top quarters bet is what i'll be looking to play um in a yankee lucky 15 so i need to do have a little bit of a look and see which bookmakers are actually going to allow you to put them into multiples to start with um and then i need to go but i've kind of i've already got, got probably three out of four i think um lined up that I'm happy enough with so I need to go back and, and do a little bit more research and just validate what I found um, and then there's one of the quarters where I'm struggling a little bit to get a clear read so I need to go back through that um, but yeah I mean I, I follow the darts I like, I like playing a bit of darts uh, you know back in the hey, back in the day it's not like I'm old and grey is it but back in the day I did used to play darts and dominoes leagues in the pubs um, so if it, you know People will be familiar with darts leagues. Not everyone will be familiar with dominoes, but you know, for those of you who know what I'm talking about, fives and threes, pretty good. Uh, I used to play with my old man. We used to be pairs up. People used to think we were tic tacking. I'm going on a tangent here. Just to be clear, tic tacking, like you know, you like you go horse racing, and people used to tic tacking in dominoes. Like genuinely, this is a real thing. People think when you play pairs of dominoes with somebody you know. Um, that, that yeah, people look out for you tic tacking, i.e., using special codes to signal to each other what you might have in your hand and stuff. Just so we're clear, I know a lot of people won't get this. Dominoes isn't it, not dominoes like you stack up and you roll them down. It's a maths game. You've fives and threes. You have to basically put a, get fives and threes on the end divisible by fives and threes. The best score you can get is fifteen. If the two ends add up to fifteen, you get three fives, five threes. Anywho, yes, I used to play quite a lot of, of, of dominoes and darts back in the day. I haven't played for ages, like years. 
Um, but I, yeah, I'm really passionate about the darts. Um, and yeah, I haven't, I haven't need to get to Ali Pali at some point. Never did. I used to go to Frimley Green um, in the Lakeside when it was um, the BDO with a couple of times. Um, so anywho, that's the darts. Um, yeah, it's not an all year round thing. I, I do have occasional bets and stuff that don't do on the channel, but PDC World Championship will have a little look for the darts. I think that's it. Other than, oh, Neil, uh, I saw your message. I'll see what I can do. I'll come back to you. All right. <laughs> Just for Neil, that. Um, all right. Thank you very much. I'll be back for Thursday night for Friday. Where hopefully we'll have a little bit more than three horses, but we'll also need to be a bit cautious of the weather. That being said, Dundalk is back. So Dundalk has been kind to us uh, the last few weeks, certainly. There's a few bits I've missed and, and, and whatnot, but, but broadly speaking, uh, we've, we've been doing all right at Dundalk. So uh, it will come off the rails at some point. I usually find up until Christmas we're good. And then um, my all-weather read slightly tapers off January, February. So putting that out there. All right. Thank you very much. This is way longer than I expected. See you first tonight. Bye-bye.